Hey guys, GPA Jesus here. In this video, we're going to cover the GDP deflator. It's a concept that many students get confused on, so this video is here to clarify what it is and any other misconceptions. The GDP deflator is one of the multiple ways to measure inflation using nominal GDP and real GDP. In math, if you ever want to find the percentage of something, so let's say you have 15 red stickers out of 45 total stickers, you divide 15 by 45 and multiply it by 100%. And in this case, that would be equal to 33%. Think about it in a similar way here, in that you take nominal GDP, divide by real GDP, and multiply it by 100%. And your GDP deflator is essentially that percentage. And to remember that it's nominal above real, here's my own technique. It is generally known that nominal GDP is higher than real GDP. And so whenever you use this formula, know that nominal goes above real. Thus, anytime you remember that, you won't get stuck on a GDP deflator problem on your test. Let's learn even more about the GDP deflator through an example problem. Here's a table for a nominal GDP in billions and a GDP deflator for the years 2009 to 2012. So for part A, we have to find real GDP using 2009 as the base year for the year 2011. Now how do we find real GDP from the GDP deflator? Well it's time to use some really tricky math. If everything but real GDP is given, and the equation for the GDP deflator is deflator is equal to nominal over real times 100%, well, if you multiply both sides by real and divide both sides by deflator, then what you end up with is real is equal to nominal over deflator times 100. And in this case, you wouldn't really use a percent here. So here's one general tip. It's to not memorize every variation of a formula, but only one of them. And then you can easily derive the other forms through algebraic manipulation or substitution especially in physics. So now let's actually calculate this. For the year 2011, we divide this number by this and multiply it by 100 to get 15,021. And remember, this is in billions. So don't make the mistake just calling it 15,000, but it'd be safer to write 15,000 billion. And let's think about this. Does this make sense? Well, if nominal GDP is 15,500 and real GDP is 15,000, then this number doesn't seem totally off at all. Let's move on to part B. So here we have to calculate the inflation rate between the years 2012 and 2010 using the GDP deflator, aka these two numbers. So GDP deflator is a measure of inflation rate. How do we actually calculate the inflation rate through GDP deflator? Well, this is a little bit different from CPI, where instead we have to take the percentage change in the GDP deflator using this formula. Remember from your old chemistry courses that the percent change formula is new minus old all over old times 100%. One way to remember that's new minus old is that if it's old minus new and your newer value is larger than your older value, you'd get a negative number even though that change is positive. So let's try applying what we learned to this question. Using these two numbers, this will be your initial and this will be your final. The percentage change formula is new minus old all over old times 100% is equal to inflation rate. And in this case, that is equal to 3.953%. Remember to leave in three decimal places for AP format. Well, that's all I have for this video. If it helped you out, leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. But hopefully this helps you get a 5. GPA Jesus out. I dive for your grades.